Good morning and welcome to Creekwater Homestead. I'm just going to be doing some soap making today and I thought I'd bring you along for the process. It's going to be some apple sage soap. Um, I've got everything ready here behind me. I've got a long sleeved shirt on, some gloves, I've got my goggles ready. Um, this is not a tutorial on how to make soap, it's just to show you what I'm up to today. So like I said, here we go, I've got my goggles here. Here I've got some piped leaves that I made at a previous time that I made some soap. I had some green left over, so I just did some piped little leaves. They're quite cute actually. I'll just try and get that to focus. Okay, so I'll put those on the top of the, um, the apple sage soap that I'm making today. Anyway, so I've got my, um, my moulds here ready to go, my fragrance oil all measured out, apple sage as you can see, I've got some titanium dioxide ready to go, um, that's just a white colourant, skin safe one. I've got some what they call a lily pad mica, oh focus. No, won't focus. All right, it says lily pad micro. It's from um, Aussie Soap Supplies. I have blended it with a little bit of oil here with my little milk frother. Mixed it together just to make sure I don't get any grainy looking colorant through my soap. It looks quite pretty in there. It doesn't show up on camera, but it's really quite sparkly. So that's to go in. And I've just got my um, immersion blender there ready to go like i said my lye solution and oils and i just put the um, lye solution into the oils and i blend that together until it starts to thicken so it's kind of the consistency i suppose of um, a custard when you're cooking the custard and you're waiting for it to thicken a bit once it gets to that stage that's when you get you add your other your fragrance and your colorants and pour it into the mold so it's a bit of a hands-on process trying to make soap, so I sort of can't film the whole process, but I might see if I've got a family member free to help film bits and pieces of it together, and um, we'll go from there. I'm going to show you the process, and I'll show you the finished product. So that's what I'm up to today. It's a little bit of a rainy day. Um, it was predicted. That's why I planted those tomatoes yesterday, so it's all in the ground, and they won't just suffer so much from transplant shock. So um, that's what we're doing. All right, I'll catch up with you shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to slowly add my lye solution to my oils now that they are cool enough. Go down to temperature. Just gently add that in. I did fill this tub a bit full, so I'll have to be careful. Get every little drop out. Just duck that in the sink real quick. Rinse that so no one gets hurt. starting to change colour as I mix, it becomes more whiter, like I said I filled my bucket a bit too full, I'm making a double batch today. until I get to the point where I trace. Trace is when I can dribble a little bit across the top and I can see the line that it makes across the top. Try not to um, blend too much air into it, so I'm just trying to get the bubbles out of my mixer there. <laughs> So 
We're still too runny. Go away. Almost there. I can feel it. I think we're there. I'll just stir it for a minute. Sometimes you get a false trace and it will split again. So I'm just going to stir it for a minute and double check again. No, we're good to go. Just get the excess off that. Set that on my paper towel. Now I'm going to add my fragrance to this lot so the whole lot gets fragranced. Sometimes I fragrance it separately if I'm going to do piping because fragrance will often make it set too quick and I don't get a chance to do the piping. So I'm just going to stir this through a little bit. Give it a quick zip. Some fragrances will react differently with your soap. Um, some will make it thicken faster and set faster. Some will discolour it. Some will actually make it go really thin and it'll lo you'll lose your trace and you have to blitz it again. I can just see a hair in there. Hang on. Where'd that come from? Have a look now you can really see the trace if, if you come in closer you'll see the the line of soap on top you can see it leaves a mark and that's exactly what we're looking for okay so now I'm going to separate a little bit for the green try not to make a mess there we go I need enough room to be able to mix it Soap making is a bit of a messy process. Okay. I'm sorry if my arm's in the way. dark as I want it to be. I'm going to add a bit more colourant to that. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't go grainy. a little bit. Oh, it's still not as bright as I'd like it to be but I haven't got time to muck around now because it's starting to set. Just mix my blue in between, give it a wash, let it drip for a second. I'm going to add my white to the rest, to the base. This is going off 
really fast. my molds. Try and do it fairly evenly. I'm just going to say that again. So I'm just going to do a drop swirl here. Try and use every little bit up. Okay, so I've got it all in there now. I'm just going to give it a bit of a bang to get any air bubbles out. As you can see, it has set up. I've actually changed my mind. I am going to swirl it a little bit. So I've got like a bit of a swirling wire here. I'll just try not to incorporate too much air in there. Oh, it is quite thick, so I don't know if this will work too well, but let's just mix it around in there a little bit. Come right up to the top without breaking the surface. And just go around a couple of times. Okay, I'll do the same with the other one. I'll just do like figure eights in, inside there without breaking the top. Some in the middle, some down lower, and back out the top again, just clean that wire off. I can feel it heating up in there, the wire was quite warm when I wiped it off there. Okay, so now let's do some designs on the top, shall we? Just try and get that back in there. No, it's still too runny. I'll have to let it set up for a minute and come back. I might go and do some of the dishes while we wait. Okay, so it has set up a little bit more now, so I can start to shape it. Try and just to drag those up and make some pretty patterns on there. I'll just get it all piled up in the middle first and then I'll go back over it again. And then we've got to put our leaves on. Okay, I'll just go over it one more time just to get the lines a bit nicer. Do a little divot down the middle. Okay, set that aside and we'll do the next one.
done. Just do a little tidy up there. Down the middle we go. And every soap is a little bit different and no two alike. Okay, so that's that done. I might just tidy up these edges a little bit. Just with a bit of pointed paper towel. Just push it back within the edges of the mould. There we go. Now I'll put some leaves on. I'll only film a couple of the leaves because it's going to be a bit of a longer process. So we just place them on there. We'll push them a bit in a bit so they don't fall off too easily. I'll get two on each one. It's a bit of a guess as to where I'm going to be cutting them. Sometimes they get, they get chopped, but that's the way of it. Excuse my hand. Each leaf has a top and a bottom, so you sort of want to make sure you get the nicest size side up, facing upwards. Okay. So there you go, I've got all the leaves on now, it's all finished, it is quite hot, sometimes when they get too hot they do get a crack down the middle, it doesn't affect the finished product, it just isn't quite as pretty. Um, so we're just yeah, waiting for those to set up and I will um, leave it in these for a couple of days to cure and get hard and then we'll do an unmoulding where we get them out. Um, then they need to stay for another day when they're out of the silicon mould and then um, we get to the point where we cut them and we get to see what the, the swirl pattern inside looks like. Okay, so I'll see you in a day or two. So it's been a couple of hours since we made our apple sage soap. It is quite warm. You can see that it's starting to crack just along here. The other one is to, that, that crack should shrink again as it cools down. I hope it doesn't get too much bigger. Otherwise when you cut the bars, as you cut them in slices, you end up with a little gap in each bar of soap. But it doesn't affect the overall product. It's still soap, it still works, it still smells pretty, still will look nice on the inside. It'll just have a little bit of a gap in the top. I could put these in the fridge, but my fridge is a little bit full at the moment. Sometimes that slows the cracking process down and stops them from getting too hot. Because they can get, some varieties can get so hot that they almost volcano out. But I tend to just get a little bit of cracking sometimes with certain types of fragrances. It is a very strong fragrance, this one. I um, really quite enjoy it. It makes the whole house smell while it's curing. It's, um, it's, I think it's probably more of a men's scent or a unisex scent, um, each to their own, but um, it is a strong fragrance, this one. All right, so there's a little update for you. I'll keep you posted. Hi everyone, so it's, um, it's two days later since we've made our soap, so we're going to try having it unmolding it today so I'm just loosening the sides breaking the, the seal against the edge of the soap on all corners I'll try and slide my finger down there to loosen it on the corners the best I can without scratching the soap do the same on each end okay I'm going to try to push it out rather than pull it out Got to let go in a second. There it goes. So just loosen it all the way down. It's 
coming out nicely. So once I get it out far enough, I'll be able to sort of pull it the rest of the way out. Hopefully that's it now. There we go. So straight away I can see a little bit of the crackling on there. Um, I did heat this in the oven to gel it to make the colours come out a bit better and it's made it crackle a little bit so it looks like um, it looks like a little bit of crazed pottery on there so it might be worse inside I don't know we'll figure that out when we go to cut it but it doesn't affect the the product of the soap it just a, it's just a cosmetic thing we'll do the next one I've loosened this one already I loosened it so I could check to see if it was ready to be unmolded. It's nice and hard now. Still a little bit soft on the corners. I'm trying hard not to damage those corners. It will harden more once it's out of the silicon mold so it can evaporate any more moisture on it. being a little bit stubborn there we go and this one's the same it's got that crazed crackling on it too I don't know if you can focus in here I don't know if it'll come up just see the little crackles in there it just looks like a bit of crazed pottery to be honest so we'll sit those to air for a little while I've put some paper towel under these and stand them up that way they can dry and get hard around all of the edges and um, the next step will be cutting it once it's had time to air and harden on the edges so we'll be back for that soon hi everyone it's the next day so I'd cut this on camera so I can show you it's always the exciting part cutting it because you never know what the insides going to look like until you do Tighten my little wire there. So this is my nifty soap cutter that my husband made me. It's a hacksaw blade or hacksaw frame with a wire on it. Okay, so I've just got to line it up a bit. Make sure we're nice and straight. These blocks are wonderful for cutting, but they don't always guarantee that it's going to be a straight cut. Okay, let's have a look. Alright, so that's our first one. Put that down and we'll have a look. Sometimes it takes a couple to get into the real patterns. A couple off the end. I'll just clean my wire between each one. Make sure it's lined up again. It smells so nice. It's like a really juicy apple smell. So there's not much pattern coming through just yet, but so every one of these is different. that leaves on the top there I don't like it when that happens but I didn't place them quite in the right spot ah that now we're getting a bit better I'll just get to see if we can get that to focus and it has got a little bit of the crackling in it I don't know if that shows up on the camera I might try and there we go you can see the crackling over here but it's a bit pretty bit of a green swirl in there and that's the top 
the leaves on the top. Oh, just the smell. It's, it's really strong while it's curing. They do take a minimum of, oh, well, they say they're safe to use after 72 hours. Um, but I leave them for a minimum of four weeks, but I prefer between six and eight weeks before we use them. If You can use them after 72 hours, but it's quite a soft bar and it won't last as long in the shower or in the bathroom because they're a bit too soft. If you just cure them for a longer period of time, it makes them harder and they last longer. Bit of a, still a bit of a subtle green swirl in there. It's not overly dramatic. All right, I'll finish cutting this one up and then we'll get to the next one and we can have a look at the patterns in the next one. Okay, so we're on to the next one. <clears throat> Let's see what we get in this one. Not much to show in that one yet, but it's still very pretty. Like I like these little spikes in it, and the swirl in that. Very subtle. I didn't put a huge lot of green in it. I saved quite a bit for the top to make the top a bit nice. Maybe I should put more in next time, I think. But it did set up quite quickly on me. Oh, here we go. You can see the line there where I wiggled a little bit when I cut it with the wire cutter. But that's right, that will shave off. I love making soap and the smell that it puts all through my house for a couple of weeks while it's curing. It's better than having a, an air freshener or one of those plug-in scent things that you get. These work so much. Having soap in your house, freshly made, works better than any plug-in air freshener. Clean my wire. And you can see the crackling quite a lot in that one. But like I said, it looks like crazed pottery. I actually don't mind it. And the, this one did get a crack on the top. Oh, I'm trying to get it to show. It's just here. I'm glad it didn't go right down in it that you can see it on the front. Sometimes when you they crack, if they crack really deeply, it goes down into the top quite a bit. But no, it's only very subtle. Good. I've had quite a few people request to come and make soap with me for me to show them my process. So I shall organise a day for that in the not too near future. <clears throat> I need to make a um, sugared strawberry one that's very popular. I need to make it soon so they're cured in time for Christmas. So I make terrific Christmas gifts and baby shower gifts.
Okay, so I'll cut the rest off camera. You don't. I think you get the idea without having to see every single one of them being cut. But they do smell. Oh, so juicy, so juicy. It makes my mouth water. It makes me want to go and have something yummy. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching my soap making process. Um, a lot of people don't realize how much actually goes into making soap and the equipment that you need. And um, there's a lot of study as far as getting your, your, your lye water ratios right to your oils and what types of oils have different factors and add different benefits to your soap. It's a bit of maths and science involved. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate you watching and, and learning and seeing what's involved. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks. Bye.